I feel like <laughs> Don't worry, they'll grow to full size. <laughs> Regrowing limbs, crash test participants, and suspicious hospital visitors. Get ready to laugh and learn because today we are back at it, breaking down all of the wild medical scenes and injuries from American Dad. All right, let's dive right in. Oh! Uh-oh. What the hell are you doing? Come on. Things we worry about here, cold water. So, you know, if you fall into cold water, you can have a cold water reflex where you start hyperventilating, and then you can actually to get water into your lungs as well. You can drown that way. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. Took four tranquilizer darts. In the emergency department, sometimes we use something similar. We're not tranquilizing anybody. But if there's somebody who's agitated and causing harm to other people themselves, we have medications that we can give IM, which means intramuscular, and they will get more sedate or calm. Ew. Wow. Dan, oh. holy cow. So the deep lacerations to your face and it's an animal, right? So we get into a situation where these are dirty wounds. Even if you wash them out really well, there's a high chance that they can get infected. He's missing his right leg. It looks like it's an above the knee amputation because it's got one bone, so it'd be like your femur. Obviously, this is something where you would actually try to tourniquet the leg because of major blood vessel bleeding. Roger, take me to a hospital. I'm bleeding to death. Which is exactly why we don't have time to argue. <laughs> Bandages on both legs, which are good. And then you see the belts there on each leg, which are being used as tourniquets, obviously. A tourniquet, basically, you're using a device that can spin and tighten that way and then lock into place. Using a belt and just having one force to be able to strap it down it might not be as tight as you can potentially get it. Roger. It's okay, Stan. We're inside <laughs> area in a wheelbarrow. I think I know exactly where to oh, find my fanny pack. Wait, why? Is oh, this is not a hospital. They bandage up the legs. You definitely need to bandage up the arms as well. You know, there are blood vessels there that you can actually continue to ooze out of. And collectively, you don't want to lose too much blood. I feel better. A lot better. I feel like... <laughs> don't worry. They'll grow to full size. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be really cool if you can grow your own legs back again you know the technology that we have for people who have lost limbs and the prosthetics that we are developing super cool and being able to connect them to our own neural network amazing could they actually come up with this using your own tissue that would be awesome but not that i've seen in modern medicine currently so now I need to earn $300 for my friend's calves. It's not for drugs. Usually it's for drugs. Well, if friendship is a drug... <gasps> oh, is he like a crash $4. test dummy? You said 20. Oh my gosh. Looking at impact, he's got a lot of abrasions and lacerations to the face, which is most likely caused by the glass. We look for damage to the car itself to give us an idea if there's spidering of the windshield. So in the sense of could you have hit it and it spiders out. If the steering wheel itself is bent or broken, you know, that could be a trauma force. So you want to see what the underlying trauma is or the destruction of the car on the inside to see what actually happened to this individual. Fly it to area. What? Okay, and how soon till it takes effect? Ah, ah, ah! Oh, it burns! It burns! <laughs> Dr. Slippy, your penis burning cream works! What the heck? He's not there to take care of his injuries. This is something else. He volunteered for something else. Who wants a penis burning cream? There are creams out there relating to premature ejaculation where it almost numbs the penis, but I don't know why that there would be something called a penis burning cream. So then I said, what the hell? I'm on vacation and I had a second Tic Tac. You can totally tell. Obviously not good for you. You don't want to be the skinny. A lot of hormonal changes that could occur. You worry about electrolyte abnormalities as well. And even how many red blood cells you're making. Eating disorders are no laughing matter, young lady. Nope. 
Young lady. Now, now, I, I know in high school, in the showers with the other girls, you feel uncomfortable with your body. I'm not in high school. When was the last time you menstruated? I've never menstruated. This individual brings up the menstruation because once somebody who has normal menstrual periods then actually drops a lot of body weight and fat, it doesn't support the normal hormonal function. Like your father get this disease, it's usually the result of a jarring event. So different events in your life could lead to somebody not wanting to eat relating to being embarrassed, uh, getting a lot of weight, having a medical condition to where somebody chooses not to eat. You shouldn't be here, Veronica. Yeah, but your family will keep sending you back until they think you're getting better. So families always try to help, you know, they see um, an individual that they love and they're suffering and they don't want you to suffer. So of course they're going to try to kind of push you along to get help. The individual doesn't want help. It's a very much an uphill battle. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. I was expecting purging or vomiting. The enamel or the dentition of the individual will actually start to erode if somebody vomits multiple times. You can also have kind of other secondary findings related to like hair falling out and just different imbalances that you would see. To the hospital. I know my body and it is attacking my heart. But I don't know how. Just drive. <laughs> I'm going backwards! <laughs> That's ah! So, a lot of times we get this uh, in the emergency department where people drive themselves to the hospital for their ailments, right? That's more common than somebody taking the ambulance, especially if they think they're having a heart attack. Immediately, when you get to the hospital, we will get an EKG done to make sure that you're not having a big one. And then we'll do a blood work, put you on a cardiac monitor, give you an aspirin because that's the first medical problem that we want to make sure you're not having. Made it all the way to the hospital in reverse, pretty good. He's doing what's called Levine sign. Levine sign is when you actually you have a fist and you put it over your heart. That is an indication or a sign that could be that somebody is having a heart attack. It's family only beyond here? Is this man your father? No, he's not. But I am <gasps> a man who knew your father. <laughs> yes, you know, families only or close, you know, friends. We try to keep visitors in our hospital to one to two. You just want too many people back there. It's chaotic, it's dangerous. There are capacity limitations. You just can't have everybody under the sun in there. Sorry about my sweaty hand. I got hyperhidrosis. It feels normal to me. I also got hyperglycemia, hypertension, and I'm a hypochondriac. So hyperglycemia, elevated blood sugar. Typically, if you're eating normally, your body would secrete insulin to keep your blood sugars below 200 per se. Hypertension, elevated blood pressure. Obviously, we, we know we want to control our blood pressure. Prolonged elevated blood pressures can lead to remodeling of the blood vessels. And hypochondriac, basically meaning like, uh, I'm worried that I have everything. Hey, you think I could dig up an MRI in this joint without talking to anyone? I don't think so. Were you gonna talk about my dad? So MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, basically using uh, magnets to form an image. It takes a while, it's very loud. You can't move at all, and, so, and that's the one where it's like a tube that people don't like. Come on, I'll tell you about your dad. Fun fact, we were blood brothers. I gave him hepatitis. There are multiple different types of hepatitis. There's five that we think of. And the biggest worrisome are the bloodborne pathogen ones, which is hepatitis B and C. We have vaccines against B. We have therapies for C. Hepatitis C could actually lead to hepatocellular carcinoma. So these are things that you do worry about. American Dad, as always, fun to react to. Very interesting. If you guys enjoyed this, definitely check out this playlist right here. Binge watch everything for me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn your bell notifications on, and like the video for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.